today's scripture reading is taken from Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 14. Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestinated us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. Verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our, our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the ministry of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestinated according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory. In him, also, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. May God bless his own words. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? How did you get out of bed this morning? Did you jump out full of excitement and shouted, It is a new day to worship the Lord? Or did you crawl out of it, groaning, Ah, another day? Are you a jumper or are you a crawler. One of the reasons why you are a crawler or a jumper has to do with your understanding of who God is and who you are. The more you know of God's greatness, the more you know of your smallness. Your knowledge of God will define who you are, and it will affect how you live your life. You see, we, we live in an I culture. Um, everything is about me, myself, I. I love me, myself. I am who I am. I am nothing if I cannot be me. There was this man who loved to talk about himself. Men can be very talkative, I'm telling you, as long as they find someone to talk to. So this man was talking to his friend about his, himself, bragging about himself. Uh, I, I just got promoted. I, I just bought a, a new car. Um, um, I, I just love to cook what I eat. And I am going to be a grandpa, and not me. I'm going to be a grandpa. So he realized that he had been talking non-stop, 30 minutes straight. So he paused and he looked at his friend. Oh, enough for me. Let's talk about you. What do you think of my new iPhone? What I'm saying is that in this I culture, our understanding of ourselves is that I am the center of myself. All that I am or hope to be, I owe to myself. But the Word of God is telling us otherwise. All that I hope, 
all that I am, all that I hope to be, I owe to Christ. So, who are you? Who are we? Verses 3 to 6 tells us that we are chosen by God. We are chosen by God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love, He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ to the praise of His glorious grace with which He has blessed us in the Beloved. In practice, we Christians, in practice, we call Jesus the Son of God and ourselves children of God, right? And, but I notice, these phrases have become so common that it is easy for us to, don't, to forget about what they really mean and their significance. Do you know, do you know who you are? Let us look at the text again. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, uh, verses 3 to 14, that portion we just read a while ago, is one long sentence without break, a doxology, a declaration, a spontaneous outpouring of blessings to God for who He is and for what He has done in Christ for us. The phrase in Christ or the like uh, can refer to different things like um, through Christ, belong to Christ, in or under the power of Christ, depending on the context. The, the phrase appears 12 times, 12 times in this text. The emphasis is this, God, God, our God, is the source of all blessings, but, but we can only have access to them through Christ. If we live out in Christ, we will never have any blessings at all. God, in verses 4 and 5, God has chosen us before the foundation of the world, before time began, before the earth was created, before humans were formed. God had already predestined or had decided beforehand to adopt us as His children as into his family, as his sons, and as his daughters. We didn't choose God. He chose us. We are not an accident. We are a divine choice. Do you get that? We didn't choose him. He chose us. We are a divine choice. That is who we are. We are chosen by God. I know of a young couple, a very close friend, um, a, a couple. They decided, they, they didn't have any children, they decided to adopt a child. And when they made that decision, the child was still in the womb of the mother. They didn't know the gender. They didn't know the, uh, the condition. They didn't know the skin color of the child. They didn't know anything about the child, but they had already decided to adopt the child as their child. When I saw how they showed their affection and love to that little dark-skinned baby girl, I was so touched. Because you can tell right away the child and the parents are so different. And this reminds me of the love of our Heavenly Father who adopted us as His children even way before the foundation of the world. It is very unlike, unlike the adoption practice in the Roman world 
where individuals were adopted to prevent a family name from dying out. In the Old Testament, Israel was adopted as God's children, even though they were hard-headed, rebellious, unfaithful, and there was nothing good in them at all. God chose them. Today, today, from the moment you entered this world, you are a child of God. When God looks at you, He sees His child. He loves you. He loves you unconditionally and there is nothing you can do to make Him stop loving you. You will always be His child. No matter how old you get, no matter what you do, and no matter what happens to you. You are His child. As parents, all of those of us who are here, as parents, we know, and we know that we will always, we will always see our children as little children, right? No matter how old they get, and even when they have become adults, we will still see them as children, right? We will always see them as they first were, babies. Not that we don't trust them, just that we, we love them so much. We are not willing to let go of them. We would become so protective. So young people here, remember, please don't get angry at your parents when they are being too protective, too protected. Uh, parents, do you agree with me? Uh, I hope you do. You may not have a father or you, you may have an abusive father, or you, your relationship with your father is not good, or you are not proud of your father. But our Abba Father is different. I remember when my two sons were still small, I always told them, I always told them that I was not a good father. I make mistakes. I am not perfect, but there is only one, our Abba Father in heaven, who is perfect and perfectly good. He is full of grace, mercy, and compassion. He is the true Father who wants to shelter you and surround you with His love. He will not abuse you. He will only amuse you with His amazing grace. You can come before Him. Come without fear and with the full rights of a son and a daughter. That is who we are. We are chosen by God to be His children. Also, we are redeemed in Christ Verses 7 through 10. We are redeemed in Christ. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth. The term here, redemption, is not the same as a commercial transaction. You see, during the time of Paul, there were six million Jews, uh, sorry, six million slaves in the Roman Empire. Six million Slaves in the Roman Empire, everywhere you went, you see slave markets. And people, you will also see people redeeming or buying back a slave to become their property. But the Bible, in the Bible, the idea of redemption is very different. 
already in the Old Testament, God redeemed Israel through the blood of the Lamb. Remember, God's angel passed over the houses that had the blood of the Lamb painted on the two doorposts and the lintel. The firstborn sons in those houses were saved and were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Today, God brought us back to Himself through the death of His Son, through the shed blood of Jesus. We are guilty of many sins, right? But our God looked deeper. And when God decided to redeem us, He had to absorb the cause of our trespasses. That was the reason why He sent His Son, Jesus, to us. That was the reason why Jesus went to the cross. Instead of us paying the cost, our God paid with the life of His Son, Jesus. Our God is gracious, far more gracious than any of us deserves. Redemption has a high price. It costs the life of Jesus, the Son of God. Through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are gone forever. Not one, not two, not three, but all of them. All of them are gone. What, whatever data you have in your computer, they can still be retrieved even if they have deleted. All your email messages can still be recovered even if they are deleted, right? But our sins, our sins are gone forever because God has redeemed us. God erased them permanently. If you ask God, where are my sins? He will answer, what sin? That is who we truly are. God's forgiveness is real or our Christ died in vain. Christ is the beginning as well as the end. Christ is the Alpha as well as the Omega. Our Christ is our scapegoat as well as our Savior. Unfortunately, oftentimes, we think that we are unworthy. Our past keeps haunting us. Our guilt keeps holding us back. When it comes to bad things, our memory becomes super. We, we are so good in remembering things. We have the memory of an elephant. I remember an incident happened in um, uh, the, the elephant century in Tennessee, America, USA. There was once um, an elephant by the name of Shirley was brought into that century in 1999. So when that elephant was brought into that century, one of the resident elephants uh, called um, Jenny became very anxious when she saw that elephant. And when the two met, they, they, they were so excited. They, they, they started checking out each other with their trunks and making noise and playing together as if it was a happy reunion. So it passed the, the workers there. So after looking at the elephant's backgrounds, they discovered that the two met 23 years ago when they performed in the same circles. Wow. Elephants have super memories. Their brain is six, uh, five to six kg heavy. You know that? Heavy. The, the brain can encode, uh, can encode um, information, um, um, survival details, imprint key data to their brain to be recalled years later. In contrast, our brain 
is only 1.5 kg for maybe some of you who are bigger, you, you have a heavy, heavier brain, mine may be 1 kg. Now, our brain is way smaller than the elephants, but we remember things. We remember things better than the elephants. Oh yeah, we remember things, especially the bad ones. Is that who you are? What is redemption? What is redemption? It means that the old is gone and that the new has come. It means that those whom the world call the tax, the tax collectors, Jesus called disciples. It means that those whom the world call sinners, Jesus called saints. It means that those whom the world call fishermen, Jesus called fishers of men. What is forgiveness? It means that we are no longer the outcasts, but are members of God's family. It means that we are no longer ashamed, but are honored. It means that we are no longer despised, but are accepted. It means that we are no longer guilty, but are set free. That is who we are. We are redeemed in Christ. Last but not the least, we are sealed with the Spirit. Verses 11 through 14. In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believe in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until, until we acquire possession of it to the praise of His glory. We see the word sealed here. A seal is an identifying mark that is stamped on a letter, a contract, an item, an animal, or even a person to show ownership as well as protection. But the seal that we are talking about here is not a what, but a who. The sealing is not a stamp, but a dwelling, a feeling. It is the Holy Spirit who is God's seal, God Himself dwelling in us. Adam and Eve were sealed with God's image, but they rebelled against God and tarnished that image. Today, God, through His Son Jesus, has brought us closer to Him with the seal of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament tabernacle was filled with the glory of God. The New Testament tabernacle is the body of Jesus Christ who was filled with the Spirit. Now, the church, the body of Christ on earth is filled with the Spirit. It means now, it means that we now belong to God. God has taken possession of us, not just in the future, but now. Are you excited about it, church? You, you are possessed by God. You belong to Him. God has claimed us for Himself. Not only that, you know that inheritance works both ways. He has also given us a claim on Him. Not just in the future, but now. We can claim God. God is ours and we are God. Do you know that the feeling of the Holy Spirit also gives you the power to live as a child of God? It will produce in you the fruit of the Spirit. 
love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, in baptism, we are sealed by God's name. Remember when you were baptized, you were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are sealed with God's name in our baptism. In our Holy Communion, God's spiritual seal is present in the sacrament. Whenever the Word of God is preached, God's spiritual seal is present in the preaching. God's presence is here with us now in the preaching, in the church. Because God's Spirit lives in us, we can call God our Abba Father. That is who we are. We are sealed with the Spirit. Now, church, if that is who we are, why are we not experiencing it? Why? Is there something that is holding you back? Why are you not happy with your Christian life? Why? I think we lack one fundamental practice, which is to praise God. To praise Him in the morning, to praise Him in the noontime, to praise Him in the evening. To praise Him when life is good, to praise Him when life is bad. To praise Him for who He is and for who you are. Notice that we are chosen according to God's purpose. Look at verse 5. We are chosen according to God's purpose. Not only that, look at verse 9. We are redeemed according to God's purpose. And then 11. We are sealed with the Spirit according to God's purpose. What is that purpose? What is the ultimate purpose? Now, I want you to notice again that there is a phrase that keeps repeating over throughout the passage. Look at verse 6. To the praise of His glory. Verse 12. To the praise of His glory. Verse 14. To the praise of His glory. God's ultimate purpose is not so that we are saved and can go to heaven. But to enjoy Him, to enjoy Him and to praise Him now. God's ultimate purpose is not so that we can go to heaven in the future, but to praise Him, to enjoy Him forever now while we are still on earth. That is who we are. We are a people of praise. When you start praising Him and enjoying Him, your life will be different, will not be the same again. When you start praising Him, you begin to see who you truly are. When you start praising Him, you become who you truly are. When you start praising Him, your stone face will shine. When you start praising Him, the corners of your heart will turn into a burning heart. Your life of indifference will be different. Church, our God wants to give you a new purpose in life, a life full of praise. He wants to transform your life, a life full of blessedness. He wants to bless you, to love you, to be with you, making you His very own. My question is, what is holding you back? Fifty years ago, a boy was born with severe combined immunodeficiency. And immediately, he was forced to be placed in a specially constructed sterile plastic bubble. From 20 seconds after his birth until he died at age 12, 
he was placed, he lived in that bubble. He ate and slept. He played and studied in that bubble. Everything was done in the bubble. He was called the bubble boy. And to prevent him from getting infections, he could never have any human contact. This sickness was holding him back in the bubble. And this bubble was holding him back from touching his mom. At the age of 12, after an unsuccessful bone marrow transplant, he died. And before he died, doctors removed his face mask. And that was the first time the mother was able to kiss the boy. And that was the last time. But that was enough for the boy. After 12 long years, the boy was finally able to touch the face of his mom. He smiled. He smiled. Nothing was holding him back now. Nothing was holding him back. Church, when I read of this courageous boy and his wrenching, heart-wrenching story, it reminds me, it reminds me of our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father longs to draw near to you. He longs to touch and to hold and to bless you. But what is holding you back? May I ask, if you are not a child of God, what is holding you back from becoming one? And if you are a child of God, what is holding you back from enjoying Him? What is holding you back? Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you once again for reminding us of the great things you have done for us. We praise you for adopting us as your children even before the foundation of the world, for redeeming us in Christ and filling us with your Holy Spirit. Help us, O Lord, to experience the spiritual blessings that you have bestowed upon us and give us the strength and the courage to draw near to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.